Hi. Hi, everybody. Hey, everyone who's filtering in. I know Dave and I literally both just tweeted about this. Usually we like give you 20 minutes of a heads up, but uh, it's the middle of the summer, so we're moving slowly, as we all do. Um, I'm Maddie. Welcome to .NET Maui Community Stand Up. First Thursday of every month, we talk about some cool blogs, some cool PRs, libraries, all those things. Um, and then we always have a special guest. So Dave, why don't you introduce yourself and then we'll have our, our guest introduce herself. Sounds good. Hello everyone, David Ortnow, Principal Product Manager uh, for .NET. I know it's hard to get that out of my mouth. Um, <clears throat> I just recorded a uh, presentation this morning and I stumbled on it then too, but I stopped saying Program Manager. Uh, so I've been uh, been around. Uh, <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> been around. He was also on vacation last week, so it's going to take him another two weeks to get back into. That's true. Uh, <laughs> both vacation and uh, and then a week full of lots of meetings. So lots of exciting things happening. I'm uh, I'm going to bring you some uh, of the community news for libraries and uh, such, but uh, even better. Antonella is with us. Antonella, you want to introduce yourself? Of course. Hi, everyone. I'm Antonella. I'm an intern at Visual Studio, and uh, this is my second internship. So I did an internship last summer remotely, and now I'm coming to you all from Redmond. Cool. I'm so excited. Thank you for joining us. Antonella's got a really cool summer project she's working on, um, but she works within the team that brings us like XAML, Hot Reload, and the live visual tree and the live preview and all that stuff. So it's a really cool cool team to be on. So yeah, so if you this, this is your first time in one of these, welcome. Thank you for joining. Um, we're, people are filtering in very quickly. So um, oh, hi, Jeremy. You're on vacation? I hope you're in Maui. <laughs> Sucker. Just kidding. <laughs> so um, the way this works is we'll talk about some of blogs. We'll talk about PRs or libraries. I think Dave's just going to do libraries today. And then we'll turn it over to Antonella for the second half. So um, even if you're in the middle of, you know, dinner, lunch, breakfast, whatever, right now, come back in 20 or so minutes and, um, yeah, sweet. So let me put my screen up. Let me make sure it's the right screen. I have, I feel like I haven't done this in a while. Did we do this last month? Yeah, we did. <laughs> we did. June was an eternity. That's what I'm realizing. <clears throat> oh boy. So, um, these are our links. And of course I'll put these in the chat. Um, it is .NET Maui UI July, which mm -hmm. I don't know if it should be .NET, m m .NET Maui July. No, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a funny way to like punning, to make a pun to combine them, but it's just too confusing. Maybe put a hyphen in there. I don't know. Um, but this year is being run by Matt Goldman. So thank you, Matt, for setting this up. You might remember Xamarin UI July from last year that Steven Thavison put on. Um, but now we're, we're maui in it up and there's a ton of blogs that are coming out this month. We'll look at one or two today. Um, there's also still some spots available. So if you are interested in, um, blogging maybe, or if you have a blog that you think could fit on this and you want the motivation to finish it up and get some good publicity for it, this is a great place to do so. Um, I'm very excited for next month's stand up when we just are pretty much going to talk about like a bunch of these and then I don't have to do any work because... The list is already here for me, so that's good. Um, and we've got some great names on here. I'm sure uh, if you're a Maui community member, you'll, re you'll recognize some of them. Um, but if not, then you'll just get to know them, and they're all great. So one of the ones that came out was um, F1 TV app replica in Maui. So a couple reasons I chose this one. One, because... F1, I'm just slowly starting to get into. A lot of our Microsoft people are very into it. I don't know if other people are, but I mean, in the US, like it's not something we talk about, but I have a lot of US friends who are super into F1 now. And so I was watching a bit this weekend and I watched that crazy crash and then the guy was fine. And I was like, oh, thank God. And then I was like, whoa, like this is a whole, there's like a whole political debate about the halo. Woo. So anyways, I just thought it was topical to do an F1 app. Um, but also because this is a pretty good looking app and uh, building it in Maui looks great. Um, this is it. This is the replica of it built for Android with Maui. Um, and Andreas takes you through, this is a pretty, pretty meaty blog. 
um, all of the different components of this, which is how I like to think about UI, like all the different sections and if it's in a stack or whatever. Um, you got some carousel, you got some videos. I don't, I don't think this actually plays them, which is okay because this is just a UI blog. Um, and of course the drawing, we're doing some pads here. Woo, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. So anyways, cool blog. Check it out. And um, Gerald. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. No, I was just gonna say and a video. There's a video. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, Gerald resurrected snippets.dev and added the word .NET MAUI to it. .NET MAUI and. It used to just say Xamarin Forms UI snippets. Um, I tried to show someone this like a couple weeks ago and it was down. Mm -hmm. And I was so mad. <laughs> and then I saw via Xamarin UI July that Gerald had put it back to life. And I'm very excited. If you haven't seen snippets before, it's just a bunch of examples of Xamarin forms and now Maui apps um, with the source code for them. So you can like go look at this cool like calling animation thing and app hmm. um, and the source code for it. Which... Yeah, that's one of my favorites. And if, if folks that are watching don't know this, um, all of that XAML should work pretty much exactly the same uh, in .NET MAUI. So even though some of the samples and the project source may be Xamarin Forms, uh, all of the same stuff should apply um, with, you know, minor caveats. But just just letting you know, because I did see yeah. some confusion on Twitter from some people who were new to the to the ecosystem yeah. saying, well, that's Xamarin Forms. I can't use it. No, you can you can use it. Totally can. We we worked hard to maintain as much compatibility with Xamarin Forms as we could while still moving everything forward. So, but yeah, that that, that I love the wiggle. It's so awesome. good. It's such a good idea. Oh, yeah. Um, so Jesse Liberty has been doing a blog series, uh, of course, starting at part zero because he is a developer. This is part one. Um, but Jesse is basically doing. Maui for Xamarin devs, but not a migration, which there is plenty of migration content. So I thought this was a nice way to frame it. Like it's building a Maui app from scratch and comparing and contrasting it with Xamarin, which, and and, it, and this is how he's learning it is by blogging it. So you're really going to go along with someone who has authored books on this stuff and been in the community for a very long time. Um, and so, yeah, definitely an interesting blog if you're just tr starting out with Maui. This does talk a lot about like the single project stuff, which is the big difference with Xamarin. Um, but of course, like the XAML is pretty much the same. So check that one out. Um, updating to Maui GA. Um, this is taking the Maui Beach sample app that this is Dave, right? Yeah, this is Dave. Um, that Dave was working on and taking it from preview 11, which was what, Jan January, February, January? A long time ago. Um, and updating it to Maui GA. It's just a simple playground app, but um, it might be interesting if you're someone who like tooled around with Maui a while ago and got overwhelmed with the idea of upgrading it. And now we're like, oh, oh, I should probably do that. So you can do that. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Two more. Oh, performance. No. If this is your first time on a community stand up, these freaking notification notifications things. I will never accept notifications for your blog. <laughs> I love your blog. That's why I follow you on Twitter. I'm not going to let you notify. Anyway, my biggest pet peeve. A lot of y'all do it too. A lot of y'all. So <laughs> it's not just, it's not just this one, but um, anyways, everyone uses HTTP requests. I, I wouldn't say everybody. Most people do some form of HTTP request in their app, right? Why am I yelling? Someone just joined. Because people ask me if I want notifications from their blogs, and I do not. I don't want notifications from your blog. I don't want notifications from any blog. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Um, <laughs> Dan says he doesn't do that. Okay, Dan. Yeah, okay. Anyways, some tips and tricks for making HTTP performance better. Um cleaning up after yourself, which is something I never do in code because I am a PM and uh, I can write in junk and nobody will get mad at me for it because I don't have strict performance measures. Um, and some cool JSON stuff. We love serialization. So there were also a lot of good references on this one. Um, I love links that give me links to things. So big fan. And then finally, also on performance, our good friend Sharpnado 
Jean Marie. <laughs> collection view performance is something we hear about all the time. And we understand that collection view is a work in progress. Um, if you have tried to switch linked um, list, list views to collection views and had some issues, you know, I get it. But there are also some things you can do to make your code faster. And Sharpnado has gone ahead and itemized some of those things um, in his great personality, as always. So, um, yeah, definitely give this a scroll. I mean, Collection View is kind of, I'm sure Gerald is like cringing every time I'm like, Collection View is great on demos I give. Because he's like, there's a lot of work we want to do to it still. But it's a good control. It's important. Um, and, you know, eventually we'll hopefully start doing some of this stuff for you by default so that newbies don't get caught into these performance traps. But um, interesting things to think about here. So that's it, Dave. I'm turning it over to you, and I will send the links in the chat again. All right. Let's uh, share my screen. Yeah, where's your screen? Typing, sending, sharing. All about sharing. I'm You're sliming me. <laughs> so slime got added last month, and I'm very excited. I'm sorry. Oh, there he is. We added it for our learn day or whatever. Uh -huh. uh, all right. Can you share my screen, please? Share it. Ready? Boop. Presenter. Um, th them, themmer onion. onion. Them. Uh, let's see. Maybe there's a name if I cover this. Pavlo. All right. I don't know if Pavlo is the one. Pavlo is the one that uh, messaged me. Somebody messaged me with like in the last 48 hours or so saying, hey, uh, I shipped a, a, a nougat of Google Maps for Maui, Android, and iOS. It might have been Pablo. Honestly, it's been a whirlwind of a, of a few days. So uh, if there's another package out there, maybe you have options. But um, good news. Hey, uh, Maui Google Maps is alive and well. So if uh, you're Jones and dying for a, uh, um, a map solution, there you go. Um, the Mr. Onion. Actually... Someone just said in the chat, it's the Mr. Onion. That's <laughs> the so Mr. Good. Onion. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know what? Like MR gestures, Mr. Gestures. It took me forever to figure out that was Michael Rumpler. MR. <laughs> hey, you know, we can't all be geniuses. <laughs> Although I do pride myself on being able to decode personalized license plates. So That's a good I just skill. I just need to I just need to focus. All right. See if I if I put my hands like this, it doesn't mean that I'm cold or that I am uh, being cold towards you. It means I'm trying not to type on my keyboard while I'm multitasking. All right. Uh, so yeah, Google Maps, pretty awesome. Uh, there's probably yeah. So not for desktop, but yes for Android and iOS, which I think for most folks that's what you want. Anywho, if you do actually want maps for desktop applications with Maui. Uh, in particular, Windows, where it's not available yet. Uh, I would love to hear that from you. So send me your messages. What else do we have here? Uh, compiled bindings. This is one I've highlighted several times. Um, and I wanted to bring it up again because it continues to get updated. It was updated 21 days ago. Um, so this is, I should call out names well. Anybody want to tell me what that is? Yeah, I don't know. Um, if you want me to call your name and, and receive your accolades, you need to put your name on your GitHub profile. Um, Xbind, uh, so if you are a WPF developer, you are uh, probably, end up, or UWP when, when UI, uh, you love Xbind more than likely. But you can also do cool things like function calls directly in line with your bindings and uh, we have compiled bindings in Maui using the existing binding syntax. Um, this is just another way to do it, but also has some additional awesomeness, like you know, coalescing right in your binding syntax. Pretty awesome. Don't know what this does to hot reload and whatnot, but uh, perhaps check that out because sometimes hot reload, if it doesn't know what you're doing, it can uh, stop. So check that out. Always worth a look. Uh, Maui gestures. So we have a lot of gestures in Maui, 
but uh, there are a few additional gestures that you may be looking for. MR gestures um, is a good one, Mr. Gestures. Uh, lots of gestures available in that library. Um, however, this is another option for you. So uh, let's see here. Uh, you, you can go into your Maui program and in the builder, you can enable these gestures using this wonderful method. Um, and then you can go ahead and start using them like this. So. I like this in that it's a much more concise syntax. One of the things that uh, is notorious about XAML is it can become quite verbose. It's an XML thing, right? You're like you're constantly adding nodes and, and whatnot. So being able to do things like this to uh, minimize that bloat is nice. Who, who likes bloating? Nobody likes bloating. As I've gotten older, I've, uh, I bloat. I'm 47. I'll be 48 this year. <laughs> Listen, Man. Dave and I are going to be together in person for the first time in what two two years and four months next oh, week. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. there will be some beer induced bloating. <laughs> so you better be ready. This is true. This is true. Yeah. Antonella, you're of drinking age, right? You're a senior. <laughs> Way past. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> I am an well, old. We have other interns that are not, and so yeah. we're we're being sensitive to to that. Um, but uh, all right. Well, good to know. This is what you come to the to the stand up for, right, everybody? I can't mm -hmm. see the chat right now, so it's fine. I don't know if I'm causing I'll, I'll keep you posted. Oh, Everything's right. under control. <laughs> uh, Felipe has uh, updated Neo controls. I don't know that I've seen this in the wild, but uh, I think it's just a cool example of how you can do a uh, different UI. I'm mousing over this as if it was interactive, but uh, it's actually a GIF. So it's a you know it's a style of UI, and these are some controls you can use in .NET MAUI now because he has updated the package for MAUI. Uh, this existed in Xamarin Forms before. So cool, and it's nice to see people taking advantage of and figuring out how to use this uh, the builder pattern uh, to enable the initialization of controls. Um, back in Xamarin, you would have to go into all the different, you know, app delegate, main activity, et cetera, et cetera, and do a bunch of initializations. Um, now you can just, one liner right here in the uh, Maui program. Pretty awesome. Context menu container. So uh, for desktop development, having a context menu is something that we have been asked for and uh, don't currently have plans for. So it's nice to see that this plugin provides it for you in .NET Maui and even includes uh, mobile context menus. So if that's something that you're looking forward to add to your application, this is a library for you from another Pavel, but spelled differently. Huh. Uh, this one looks more, well, he's from Earth. That's good to, he's okay, from Earth. good. If he wasn't from Earth, I don't know. We have to have, have him on as a guest. We have <laughs> questions. Gravity sports, a passion in gravity sports? Yeah. I, don't, I mean, is that like skydiving? Oh, I was just Question. thinking sports where gravity played an effect. I don't know. Let's find out <laughs> in the off. chat. Somebody tell us what gravity sports is. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be good to know. Maddie, when you see that, you can put I it will. Yes, I will be sure to interrupt you. <laughs> um, some knucklehead, David Ortnow, has been posting these weekly roundups of videos and ecosystem library packages and whatnot. Um, if you haven't seen them, Check them out. Uh, I, I'm kind of just perusing the ecosystem and seeing uh, what interesting things people are doing. I don't call attention to absolutely everything. Um, so if you see something interesting, you want me to see it and, and share it, let me know. Um, but uh, what I do see and what I see is interesting, I'm calling attention to. So save you a little bit of time. Um, Sync Fusion has uh, released an update this past week. Um, this is a bindable prop. Uh, source generator. I call it a source generator. I think it's a source generator. It generates your bindable properties at compile time. It generates code. Seems like a source yeah. generator. Um, yeah. Maui Reactor plus Hot Reload is pretty cool. So this is uh, from ADO Space, and this existed in Xamarin Forms as well, but has been updated to Maui. So it's kind of an MVU-inspired, React Native, React JS-inspired uh, app model, if you will on top of Xamarin, or um, excuse me, on top of Maui. Uh, so if we come in and look at, uh, for example, what they've done 
with the uh, weather app, my weather app. Uh, you can see that, you know, hey, in your content page, you're going to have a couple of methods rendering desktop versus layout uh, versus phone. Um, and then it's just a nice all C sharp extension methods similar to C sharp markup extensions. Um, and then you can kind of do all of your all of your uh, stuff here. So if XAML is not your thing and this is much more interesting, uh, then I would definitely recommend checking this out. I'm not sure, you know, because it's basically an app model on top of an app model performance wise, you know, are you hitting any issues or anything like that? Um, but cool thing is, is now that you have .NET hot reload, um, you can take advantage of more and more C sharp, um, and still maintain productivity in building your applications. Um, and I do believe, uh, cause I called it out here in the in the blog that they provide their own hot reload component um, package that is baked into your application to do a custom hot reload experience. Um, but we do have, I don't know if it's up yet. Maddie, I was out last week. So did we post a blog post on how to use the metadata update handler stuff for .NET hot reload to your knowledge? Okay. I don't, I don't so. remember. I know we posted the, the CICD one that Sweeky did, which was really, really good. I don't think, no, we have not done the Hot Reload one yet. All right. Uh, it was funny because I was looking at the playback on YouTube when I was talking to you, not the actual live thing. And you were making faces while I was talking. And I was like, I don't, <laughs> the communication was off. All right. Uh, so that's cool. Hey, us, Gravity Sports, two yes. answers. I think Dave's is right. Uh, one is it could be a store, which I think is va uh, valid. Dave says gravity sports are sports where you go downhill, such as skiing. Oh, like bobsled or, or luge, or yeah, yeah. which I like. I like that. Yeah, downhill mountain biking. That's a thing. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. It's a dangerous <laughs> thing. It's crazy dangerous. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to let everybody know that uh, we have shipped some Maui controls for Skia Sharp. I don't know how long they've been out there, but uh, I was doing some graphics related things. Now, this is my hand gesture for the day. I don't know what this means. It's I've been doing some graphics related things uh, over my break, uh, playing around with uh, graphics view as well as Maui graphics itself. And it was cool to see that we have a we have a canvas view. Um, Can you stop graphics... working on vacation, please? Do what? Can you stop working on vacation? I feel like you set this expectation that we all like work really hard all the time. We don't. I go on vacation. I think so little about XAML. Like the thought of XAML, I'm a, I'm, nope, nope, nope. But you, you're like, oh, oh, you know. It's I a, it's, it was my hobby. It was completely just me farting around with the graphics view and graphics APIs. Get, I was building. Because what happened was, I, here's the story. Here's the story. Uh, we were in, we were in Seattle. I took the family to Seattle for the first time. They'd never been there. They'd never been to the Pacific Northwest. And I was like, you know what? I spend so much time here and I tell you stories and you roll your eyes, but you know, let's, let's bring the family up here and, and they can experience it. We all love coffee. Everybody loves coffee. So took them to the Starbucks roastery or whatever that thing is called. We had been to the one in, in Chicago. Apparently there's three in the U S there's New York, Chicago, and Seattle. So now we've been to two of the three and I guess the next trip needs to be to New York, but in there they have a split flap display. So this is the old uh, display that you would typically see at an old train station where the letters flip over. Or if you were born early enough, which neither of you were, you might have had an alarm clock on your nightstand that had the letters, that, the numbers that flipped over. So that's split flap uh, board. So I was like, that is super cool. It's retro. I wonder what it would take to animate that and, and build that in code. So that, that's the whole, that's what I was trying. That's what I did. I did do it. Um, but uh, I also want to be able to do it using Lottie because Skia Sharp now supports Lottie. Um, and that really using Adobe uh, design tools and then building the animations there, bringing it into a Maui application using Lottie and Skia Sharp is where I'm headed with it. So um, I've got all the pieces. I just haven't stitched it all together. That all right, cool. that's your, there's your story. That's, that's all I got. Um, Let's see, were there other really cool things in here? There's an image edit library. 
which if you're using, uh, what is it called? Six labors, image sharp, uh, this probably isn't super exciting for you, but it's another way to do some image editing, some stuff there. Um, uh, Daniel, right, Daniel? Yep. Um, has shipped tiny MVVM. He has a lot of tiny things that he ships. And uh, so if you're looking for a really lightweight MVVM helper library, this might be right for you. I've used uh, tiny MVVM, tiny messenger, tiny IOC, um, all the things. I mean, uh, for lightweight things, it's the way to go. Uh, BLE.net has an update for Maui. Um, and then there's a bunch of videos here. Um, this was pretty funny, not funny, funny, but uh, cool, I guess. You uh, using Maui graphics, uh, this engineer built Sid Sidharth built a uh, side-scrolling helicopter game. Oh, cool! I think you turn some of these graphics into more of an eight-bit thing, and you you're really onto something. Um, but cool to see this working, and it's running as a Windows uh, desktop app, 2D graphics with Maui graphics. So that's cool. Um, and, uh, I'm also including, you know, things like, uh, stuff that I don't understand, um, you know, Portuguese. And I actually think I spelled Portuguese wrong, didn't I? It hasn't as a trailing E somebody yeah. is a typo because I did actually check, but I was on vacation when I did this. So who knows? Again, um, stop working on vacation. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> this is, uh, it was fun. Um, uh, this is a cool one too. So this is, uh, some kind of Arduino I'm guessing, um, device here. I don't know what these little things do, but they go like this oh. and they're being controlled from a Maui application using some older DLL. Um, there's really no explanation. It's, it's like a, one of those quick shorts on YouTube. Um, so there's really no explanation as to what all is happening there, but, uh, I thought it was pretty awesome. And, uh, being able to bring an old DLL into a modern Maui application and having it work, that seems magical. So there you go. Um, so far, I've shipped four of these uh, roundups. I'm going to try to keep doing it at, on a week or biweekly basis um, because I think it's great to see the momentum in the ecosystem um, as things are progressing. Because really, if you consider where we are in the .NET Maui uh, timeline of multiverses, um, we're, we're really at a phase one of we GA'd the product. We're stabilizing the product. We're still stabilizing the end-to-end -end developer experiences with preview tooling. Um, and we are in enabling the ecosystem to have space and time to update libraries for .NET 6. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff that is still Xamarin, TFMs, and things like that. They need to be updated to, you know, not all of them, of course. Some of them, you know, maybe you don't need them anymore. But those that are important for applications, they need space and time to now make these updates. And then once we get uh, through this phase, we'll start to see more and more apps migrating with the cool uh, upgrade assistant and or just manually. I know I do it manually. Maddie's all on the upgrade assistant train. It's fine. How, whatever you as a developer want to use to make yourself no, productive and get your <laughs> Do what apps I want. <laughs> but we were uh, we were talking to uh, uh, we were interviewing somebody just the other day who was saying, yeah, I have been uh, upgrading, migrating by hand, uh, lots of Xamarin forms to .NET Maui apps and haven't really run into any issues. So that's good to hear. Um, I know others are you know needing to see libraries enabled first. So that's part of why you're seeing me call attention to the to the momentum in the ecosystem. And I didn't call out everything like you know Esri is shipping packages, um, Progress is shipping packages, yeah. Dev Express is shipping packages, um, Sentry is shipping packages. Uh, I don't know. It has um, um, oh, I just lost the name of it. Uh, Realm. I don't know if Realm has shipped their packages yet, I but I know that they're so. working on Maui. Um, I don't know. Maybe they're still just working on it. Yeah. Couchbase. Uh, Realm is now part of Mongo, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. That was like a surprise to me. I was like, oh, Mongo bought Realm. Didn't didn't register that. So there you go. That's what that's what I brought for you today. That and my stories. Thank um, you. I had, to, I had to go to Seattle to get sunburned. I can't believe it. Because <laughs> typically family vacation for us, oh. you can stop sharing my screen. I can stop oh. sharing my screen. Stop screen sharing. Um, typically family vacation, because we have lots of time, um, is uh, is going to a beach for us. Like my my wife, my 
kids love the beach. Um, I'm not so much a beach person, you know, because bloating and whatnot. Um, <laughs> so, so it was, you know, we're like, Hey, we're going to go to Seattle and no big deal. Well, then we started looking at the weather and they're like, Oh, heat wave, heat advisory, massive, you know, and we're looking at this thinking what 80 degrees is not a heat wave. I'm yeah. sorry, not no. a heat wave. Um, but, uh, but, you know, I mean, when you don't have air conditioning everywhere, et cetera, it is, it is problematic. So, uh, but we got there and then we did the whole locks boat tour thing, um, where you, you start and you go up and then you go into the locks and then you go into the freshwater, um, which, you know, definitely advise anybody who's interested to go do that. It was educational and it was fun, but the sun was out. And so we got scorched. So day one yeah. burnt. And then uh, we did, we did, we experienced all the seasons of Seattle while we were there. It was sunny and we got burnt and then it was rainy or not even rainy. It was like spitty. You can't really call it rain, you know, it's just. Yeah, it's a drizzle. It was just a, yeah, a, a trickle. Uh, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm from Florida. So coming here and seeing the contrast, uh, first of all, no sun for days. That's been yeah. a surprise. And then like, like you said, like the heat wave, I was like 85 is a winter day in Florida. Yeah. Seriously. Oh my God. You yeah. Seattleites. We love you, but yes. you yes. don't get the weather thing. Oh, oh, one more story from my vacation. Oh Sorry. But, uh, so, so we went, uh, downtown on Sunday and uh, there were some pride parades and people were out having a great time and everything, but that made traffic really not fun. Yeah. And so I'm trying to drive, I have, I have, uh, my daughter is uh, very pregnant and so we don't want to have her walking around very much. And so I went to go get the car. And so my son and I took, uh, took what do you call these things, like Lyme bikes or whatever. And so we're riding and, and, the, and the parade is over, but we're riding down the parade route dodging people cleaning up trash and whatever and then we get to our car and then we're, we're trying to make our way back to them to pick them up down i didn't get stuck on any train tracks maddie you'll be glad oh, to know that. do not bring this up again not it, was stuck not on my fault. it was it was not your fault you were the driver um yeah she tried to get us killed on train they, they put this stop line over the train tracks and i didn't realize there were active train tracks because there wasn't a stop line before them or anything that said railroad crossing Fine. Fine. So, <laughs> so we, we're going down this road and the maps, the maps don't know there's a parade and all this other stuff, but they're taking it down this road. And then we can't get across, like I could see them, but we can't get across this road because it's one of these like highway, not a highway median situations. And so it's like, okay, well, we'll go this way. And so we go right. And next thing I know, I'm in a freaking tunnel being sent south two miles out of my way to down by the sports stadiums. And I'm like, I was literally, I could see them. And then I get routed. It was insane. I, I don't know what oh, Seattle man. folks were thinking when they designed their roads. All right. That's, that's the end of my story. Uh, thanks everybody for indulging me. Um, good. I'm back. We can, we can resume talking about code now. I guess Even that better. is my cue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> talking about accessibility. With yes. Angela. So, um, yeah, I'll do a quick overview first of kind of what the plan has been, what we're heading towards, and then I have a demo. Just keep in mind that it's very much a work in progress. I was invited on and Maddie said, like, no, come show, show whatever you have. Yeah. So I'll show whatever I have. <laughs> but basically, we're working on an accessibility checker on Visual Studio so that developers can check for accessibility on Windows apps right now. What we're using, let me share my screen so I can show you. Is it, how do I? In, so in StreamYard, you wanna hit the, the share plus button. Okay. And then screen. Your browser might have a permissions prompt. Oh uh, yeah. Yes. Okay, so. There we go. Oh, nice. Add. That? Beautiful. All right. We'll keep so. you as an intern. All right. You pass. <laughs> I passed the, pass the test. Nice. Okay. So, yeah, we're using Axe Windows, which is a NuGet package that is owned by Microsoft, but it's open source. So you can go right now and use it for anything that you want to develop. Uh, and we're integrating this into Visual Studio. 
So through our accessibility check using Axe, you'll be able to get reports on uh, different accessibility issues that what you're developing could have. Uh, there's another program that does something very similar you may or may not know already. It's Accessibility Insights, and that's also something you can go check out right now. And we're basically bringing in that functionality into Visual Studio. So let me show you, because I already have this app open set up. It's the most amazing app you will ever see in the world. Very cool very functional. Oh, nice. Beautiful. <laughs> right? But um, it'll work for this demo. So when you go into debug mode, let me see if it'll load. Let me run it again. Um, you go into debug mode, and it opens up the live visual tree. You'll see here I have my little accessibility button uh, to run accessibility checks. This app right here doesn't have any issues yet. So if I run it, you'll see a report come back saying that there are no issues. Cool. In the final MVP that I'm working on, the accessibility issues will come up on this accessibility checker window. That's not hooked up yet. So you'll be seeing it in the output window, but it's going to look a lot nicer. And I have a mock-up at the end of, of this demo so you can see what it's going to look like. But let me run the test. And you'll see that if we go to the output window, we have no errors. Right. Now, let's say I change here the content of my button to just say button, which you do not want to have for accessibility purposes because the screen readers and all those tools will not function properly. Uh, let's save that and run our accessibility check again. I'll just clear the debug window. Uh, let's run it again, go to output, and now you can see that we have these issues that came up because of that change. So that's pretty much the gist of uh, what I've been working on. You, I love Axe because it, it returns uh, the description, the ID of the issue. There's also a code for what issue you're having, and this awesome one right here, which tells you how to fix that issue. So developers will not only get the information of, oh, you have a problem here, but a suggestion of how to fix it to make their app more accessible, which wow. I think is pretty neat. Uh, and then if I show you this right here, this is the mock-up I put together of what that accessibility checker window is going to look like. So you'll get um, just like the, the information that we're seeing here in the, <laughs> there. Here in the uh, in the output, you'll get the rule that it's uh, that the issue is breaking for accessibility, the description, and then a section on how to fix that. Sweet, that's yeah. awesome. And for those of you who remember the um, XAML binding failures window, this was heavily influenced by that. If you can't tell, um, the XAML binding failures window is that what I said. But that's awesome. Wow. That was, that was easy. I don't know. That was, it's done. <laughs> Just ship it. That's, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Question. No, 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 no. Yes. Question. Um, all right. So that is for Windows. Um, are there plans or have you discussed other platforms to support? Um, like, is there, I mean, I know that mobile is a very self-contained thing and there are different mm -hmm. tools that work well with that. But mm -hmm. yeah, anything that you could share with us? Yeah, so currently I'm using the Axe Windows Nougat package to run this. So that's why that's the only one that I'm uh, running right now. But there's also Axe Android, and we've definitely been talking about how to use that uh, and what options we have to expand it to, to other platforms. Cool. Nice. And not knowing uh, how that Nougat works and everything, um, are there like... As, as a company, if I say, you know what, I care about these rules because I want to hit this level of accessibility certification, um, but these, that's nah, too hard. I don't really care about those. Um, like, do, do they have the option to customize any of that? Or is it just uh, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit? I am actually not informed well enough on the whole Axe side of things to, to be able to, to comment on that uh hmm. but 
Okay. You can set yes. custom rules in Visual Studio, though. Like, I feel like there's probably a way to, like, ignore anything that's this. Maybe. Yeah, like, you know, I mean, maybe there's a reason that I would want my button to be labeled button. <laughs> um, and I don't want to see that warning. Uh, yeah. Or I want to override it and suppress it. Um, yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. 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 And those those uh, results also won't be there unless you run the accessibility check and it won't prevent you from running or building or anything. So you can ignore it too if if that's what Ooh, you wish. That's to a do. good that's a good question. What if I want to prevent publishing an application until it passes the accessibility check? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Because I'm evil and mean <laughs> and I am going to Run it in CICD. Oh, you're just trying to get around it? Yeah. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Always getting around things. Um, so that was a WPF app, right? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Cool. So, um, and you said this will also work with WinUI, you think? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I've already been testing it out in WinUI, and cool. that's running. So the, the goal is eventually, we know this is not Maui yet. We know this is the Maui stand-up. The goal is eventually this also works for Maui. I mean, if it works for WinUI, it's going to work for Maui. So that's good. Um, so that's cool. I am super excited. I know we've had Rachel Kang on here before, who's kind of the SDK side um, accessibility guru. And she's the one who's worked on a lot of like the semantic properties and those kinds of things in Xamarin Forms and in Maui. Um, but now it's nice to see that we also have someone kind of on the tooling side taking a look yeah. at it so that we can um, make it a really easy standard thing for everybody to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I feel honored to be the one to get to to start this off because this idea has been going around for way longer than you'd imagine. Yep. What's been the hardest part to implement so far besides the parts that you haven't implemented? <laughs> um, I think honestly it was um, like, taking it to the output window instead because I was doing just debug uh, pop-up windows and we figured, oh, for the demo, it'll look better if we do it in the output. And that kind of just like threw me off because uh, yeah. I'm used to just like regular saying like Java, you'll do uh, or Python, you'll just print directly. But here when you're uh, doing this all in Visual Studio stuff, like it, it's different. So I didn't expect it to not be just like console.log and just send it to the console. <laughs> Yep. For those of you who are unaware, Visual Studio is built in WPF. So you get to learn WPF while building something with which you could then build a WPF app. But uh, it can get a little messy. <laughs> How long did it take you to like get building this? Because the, our part of Visual Studio, like we, it's not one giant solution for all of Visual Studio. Thank God. That would be a disaster. Like we have bits and pieces that are separate. Um, how long did it take you to just get like up and running and get something working in the first place? Um, I think for specifically setting up to debug Visual Studio, just so I could start coding stuff for Visual Studio, that took me maybe like my first week of the internship. Oh, um, and then like second or third week around that, I, I was ready to start messing with things, looking at the code base, getting intimidated by the code base. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I think that's the natural curve, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I um, have not been able to debug Visual Studio with Visual Studio in a long time. And I have not set, set out to try and fix that. So mm -hmm. whatever. Um, it's a very trippy experience, though, for anyone coming in with fresh eyes, like launching a Visual Studio just to debug this other window of Visual Studio. I'm like, how did they do it before that was a Visual Studio? <laughs> That's so good. Oh, Luke has a good question. What was it like the first time you actually had a running code version of VS and not just the app installed? I mean, I, you kind of just answered that, but mm -hmm. like trippy, was that a yeah. good way to put it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I never, like, I guess I didn't think about it beforehand too. Like, how do they do this? Yeah. But it just surprised me. I'm like, wow, this looks cool and, and strange at the same time. Yeah. I think like I had a reception kind of, kind of thing. thing. Yeah, I had always thought like maybe they just use the command line to build mm -hmm. everything. And That's what like, I would know. Yeah, like you can actually use the tool. That makes sense. So that's cool. Um, what's been the the favorite part of your internship so far? Well, this one I've just loved being on campus because I missed out on that last summer. Uh, so just getting to see the offices, getting to talk to people, uh, getting to see Seattle 
experience the weather for real and see if I if I can endure it full time. Yeah, yeah. yeah or you can come to Boston, where we also have an office, where the weather is worse for half the year and way better the other half the year. So you kind of just get <laughs> the extremes. <laughs> extremes. But it is closer to Florida for a vacation. So there are options, I see. It is further from Maui, though. And uh, that does suck. So cool. Um, chat, any other questions? Of course, you get an office tour, Lutz. I'm very excited. Lutz is coming to Boston in the fall for DevReach. Um, totally unsponsored ad here. You're welcome, progress. But DevReach is going to be lit. Dave will be there. I'll be there. Lutz will be there. And I was trying to say like fun things to do around Boston. And Lutz is from the UK. And I was like, all of our cool historical stuff is like very anti-Britain. Like, it's like, yeah, like we got rid of the Brits, man. We dumped all that stuff into the harbor. Like, this is the Freedom Trail. because we Get yeah, out of here. And yeah. So I was like, maybe like stay away from that. Or you'll find it really funny because we have people dress up as like 1700s colonial militia and like do tours with bad British accents. And it's it's very fun. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, a question. Do we know if this feature will be available for all of the VS licenses? So is this community or is this enterprise only? I do not know that. I think it's community. I think. I don't know that this is... We'll check. We'll check and we'll let you know. I'm sure there will be a blog about this towards the end of the summer when Antonella is wrapping up. Um, we'll make sure we get something up. But hot, it's just built into Hot Reload and Hot Reload is everything. So should just work. Should just work. So oh, cool. Um, yeah. All right. Well, uh, anything else that Dave, you want to ask Antonella, you want to share or ask or whatever? Um, I did. I was scrolling back in the chat <clears throat> and I know we talked about, um, Jean Marie's post about collection view performance. Um, I happen to know that we have some PRs from John Peppers that uh, introduced some very nice performance improvements for a collection view in Maui. So uh, that will be coming in service releases, I expect, um, if not in .NET 7. So um, be on the lookout for that. I just wanted to celebrate that for a moment because uh, any performance wins we can get are great. And uh, any stand up where we don't say Pepper's names at least three times seems like a real shame. So, I mean, when you got a name like Pepper's. I love Pepper's. If you haven't read Pepper's blog, I should have put that on the list. Jonathan Pepper's wrote the most <sighs> insane that's the only word to describe it. Blog post about performance improvements and just. Yes. I, th I think Stephen Tobe laid down the gauntlet for that. And yeah. uh, Peppers was like, oh, I can do that. I can totally do that. I remember reviewing like the PR for it. And you, we use GitHub for like our blog, blog staging. And I was like, this is the scariest pull request I've ever looked at. It's just a wall of text in a single file. <laughs> yeah, I remember I scrolled through it and I was like. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll read that later. <laughs> oh, it's so good. All righty. Well, thank you, everybody. We'll see you uh, in August for the recap of Maui UI July. Maui UI July. Still not going to do it. Um, and uh, Dave, I'll see you next week. Antonella, I'll see yes. you next week. So yes. keep, keep on Twitter for whatever crazy things Dave and I start tweeting in the middle of the night. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.